Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to make a procedural cellular pattern using the Bitmap Plus plugin. Uh, actually, you can see that I can change the seed and produce different results. Uh, I can also uh, play with the width and the height of the image. The jitter is going to deform the cells. As you can see here, I can increase or decrease the frequency and also by changing the corners you can switch to somehow a smooth result here uh, at the end i'm also going to teach you uh, how to use an offset and a boundary to produce the surface and bake it in rhino so you can use it in your projects maybe you want to extrude them for example in the z direction and uh, get the final results as you can see here okay so let's get started from scratch. Uh, first, what we have to do here is to go to the Bitmap Plus plugin. Remember that you have to always install the plugins in the file, special folder, and the components folder. Uh, and if you don't see them after restarting your Rhino Grasshopper, for example, if I go to the Bitmap Plus and right click on the file and go to properties, if you see an unblock thing here, just click on the unblock and everything will be okay. Uh, okay, first of all, what we want to do here is to go to the create and uh, we can produce different things. For this tutorial, I'm going to use this procedural cellular tool, which is really great, and we can put it on the canvas. Uh, so first of all, as you can see here, there is a width and a height. Uh, before we go forward, uh, let's take a look at a tool here in the visualize section. And this tool is really helpful if you want to uh, preview a bitmap image in the canvas. That is great. We just have to connect that to the image and we will see the final results. This is going to help us to uh, visualize and see what we are doing in Grasshopper. So what I want to do here is to change the width and the height. So this is controllable by just giving it a number slider, for example, from 1 to 1000. This is the width and the height of the image. As I increase that, you can see it's going to also increase in the smart bitmap preview image. Uh, this is also great if you want to uh, exactly see the dimensions you are using in your project. So the next input is the jitter, which I have to give it a number between zero and one. I can just right click here and give it a number slider. And as you can see, if I decrease that to zero, it's going to give you black and white. And if I increase it, it's going to deform those cells. So this is also a very important input you have to give to the jitter. And the last one, which is really important for the uh, cells, is the frequency. So as you can see here, it's again a number between zero and one. And I'm going to also give that to the frequency. From zero, it's black. And as I'm increasing that, that's actually the size of the cells. If you want to translate that into something more meaningful. So if I increase the frequency, you can see that the number of those cells are going to increase. And uh, actually, that is the final result. Uh, the other inputs are not going to affect the cells. So I'm going to convert that into a curve and get the final results. Uh, before we do that, we can also add a filter here, which is really cool. Uh, for example, if I go to the effects filter and give it to the image and give it to the output, uh, we can get different effects on the image. For example, I can go to the mode, right click here, salt, pepper, as you can see here, tape and and other things like jitter and those things, okay? So this effect tool is also great if you want to uh, put an effect on the images. Uh, the next step is to convert that into a curve. So I'm going to just go to the vectorize and find this trace bitmap. This is a great tool if you want to extract the curves. So I'm going to give that to the input. And now we have to also adjust some of the inputs so to get better results. Uh, here, uh, the most important uh, two inputs is the tree shoulder and the alpha. Uh, to get better results, uh, as you can see here, the alpha is the corner detection tree shoulder. Okay, I'm going to give that a number between zero and one, and a zero is a better uh, input because, as you see, I'm increasing this; it's getting a smoother results. Okay, so if you want to get better. 
uh, corners just put that to zero and you will be fine the next input is going to be the threshold actually the threshold is the opposite of the alpha because if I just increase that you can see I'm getting better results okay uh, that is because it's getting the brightness uh, of the image and because we have black and white the one is going to help us sometimes in different projects we have to just adjust this number based on the random cells that it has produced so just play with this threshold to get better results remember that increasing the alpha is going to give you a smoother uh, somehow like this result okay so i'm going to increase that to zero and uh, that's it that's how we can produce the cells uh, be sure to just play with these numbers and as you can see by increasing the jitter i'm getting like a curve like result which is really great by uh, the most important part which i forgot was the seed the seed is a random number you can, you can just say from zero to one thousand and the seed is going to help us to reduce different results so remember that you have to also give the seed to the input to make different results and that jitter to zero that's the most important parameter if you want to change and produce different results from the cells so the last step is to convert these curves into a series of surfaces as you can see these curves are intersecting and just a single curve is like that. How can we do that? One of the tools you can use is the Parquet plugin. Just uh, be sure to install it in the file special folder, component folders. And here you can see that I have the Parquet plugin installed and restart your Rhino Grasshopper. And in the Parquet uh, plugin, in the curve menu, you can find this network regions. The network regions tool is a great tool if you want to uh, convert a series of curves, as you can see here, uh, retrieves the regions from a network of curves. Basically, if you have a series of curves it's going to find the region inside it so this is also useful for us because we want to convert them for example these uh, to the regions uh, I'm just going to give that to the inputs remember this is a really really slow process because it has to find the intersections uh, and find the boundary inside them uh, some, uh, as you can see it's like seven seconds for me uh, because I don't want to change it further I'm just going to right click here and internalize so uh, accidentally I don't change the number sliders and get caught in every seven seconds of calculation uh, now after I've decided that I want to convert that into a surface uh, I can go to the curve and in the utility now we have to offset these curves uh, I'm going to use this offset curve loose and give it here uh, I usually give the curves also to the plane so it calculates the plane the distance is going to go inside so I'm going to give the expression a minus x and uh, turn off the regions turn off the curves and give it a small number so you can control the offset later uh, and as you can see the zero is going to give you that and the offset is going to offset these curves inside that is great you can see that we have the regions and now we can just go to the params menu and connect the surface to the output and we have the final surface okay so that is how you can convert these curves into a surface uh, remember that you can play with the inputs you can also give different effects to the image for example I can just change the effect uh, on the image and again give it to the preview give it to the input and for example like jitter uh, play with this threshold to produce different results the corner detection is going to give you a smoother result and also the jitter here is going to also change the curves the random input the size of the image and the frequency which is the size of the cells this is also cool and you can produce different results okay thanks for watching uh, remember to like this video and share it with your friends so it reaches more people and also subscribe to our channel. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.